I minister in the name of God the Father. We gather in the name of God the Father and of Jesus Christ our King and of the Holy Spirit our leader, both now and forever. Amen. Mighty Holy Spirit, you are almighty. We yield to you today. We yield to you today, O oh Jesus, our King. We yield today to you, o Father, our ruler. We yield to you. What a mighty God you are. There is none like unto thee. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We submit ourselves to you, spirit, mind, and body. Because we have you, we can do mighty things. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us hear the word of God for this morning. Matthew chapter 5, verse number 43. Eternal Father, we thank you for the word of the gospel. We thank you for the word of devotion and the word of business. As proceeded from the mouth of the King, Jesus, the maker and the ruler of all things. We highly venerate your word. The word from your mouth that we are about to hear will bring life to us as we rightly expand and interpret your word that it will become spirit and life in us forever and ever. Amen. Amen and amen. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Jesus, you are the light of the world and you have called us among many to be the light bearer for heaven on earth. Amen. You have heard that it had been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hates dying enemies. That's true. You are to love those who are kind to you, who are caring to you, who are profitable to you, and you are to hate those who openly or secretly, and you know about it, have declared themselves to be your enemies. Yesterday morning, we minister about your, 
your neighbors. Let's, let's just add a little icing on that cake. There is a place I have, I have um, ministered to you all about the two ways that you can help people. Those that either you know them or you don't know them. Whether they qualify or do not qualify for your love, but you decide to just do a one-time thing to help them and forget about it. And you look up to the universe and unto God to bless you. Or you love those that you know are profitable to you, that you, if you invest in them, that at the time of need, they will be able to invest back into you. These are your neighbors. Enemies are those who are hostile. They envy and they are jealous of you. They question why you are on this earth, why you were born, the way you were born, the color you were born, why you speak the way you speak, why you become richer than they are, or more educated, people who have open or secret hatred against you. Are you to be nice and kind to them? Not me. I will not do that. Except they fit into the category of the first thing I said about neighbors. People that you do things for not because you like them, not because you really care about them, but because you want to do a one-time thing to be generous to them. Because of God, that's the primary motive for it. Not necessarily because they qualify as humans, because their behavior and character doesn't move me to be of help to them. Should we hate our enemies? No, we don't need to hate them. But do we need to abandon them? Yes, we need to. Why? Because others can take care of them. Why? Because they can take care of themselves. Reason is that we do not want to throw our treasures before swine, before pigs, before people who you do good thing to them and they throw it into the trash. So you have to be careful not to hate your enemies, neither to love them, but to keep them far away from you and to keep an eye on them. You don't hate your enemies, neither do you love them. <laughs> You don't love them, you don't hate them. So that's the situation. That's just the way it is with me. I don't hate my enemies and I don't love them either. Let me tell you, I can't wait for God to remove my enemies from the face of the earth. Why? When it comes to human survival, I'm militant. I'm very, very militant, I'm very Jewish. I'm very angelic because either you are a good person or you are not. Let's look at verse number 44 of Matthew 5. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Love your enemies. Love here for me simply means keep an eye on them so that before they make any foul move, you've moved against them already and overthrow them. Loving your enemies simply means that you do them no harm. You don't wish them no harm. You just let them be on their own. That's the way it is with me. I'm just being frank about how this thing is. Because I cannot love those who came and wipe away 
Christians and uprooted them and took over. People who came and killed your father and mother and you expect me to love them. So I reward them for what they have done against me by loving them. Not me. I will not do that. See, let me tell you what you have to know. You have to be very balanced in this. Jesus said, do not spend your time trying to do good to people who will not appreciate it. That's what he meant by do not throw your peers before swine. Next thing. Why did Jesus curse the Jewish people? Especially their political and religious leaders. Why didn't he just leave them alone? He dealt with them. Next thing, did Jesus bless Judas Iscariot for being the one who sold him? No, he didn't. Even though he said that the father should forgive the general public for they know not what they, what they are doing. But I want you to be aware. Woe unto him by whom the son of God has been betrayed. He placed a curse on Judas and see the end of Judas. So you must be balancing these things. It doesn't mean that you know that somebody is going to kill you or openly want to overthrow your business, doesn't like you, and you, you still want to force yourself to go and love those people. That will be insanity. I have already told you that this gospel that we are reading, this word of Jesus, is a different side of Jesus that is only applied in a particular situation, in certain situations. That will not jeopardize your own security and safety. There is a place you reach in wealth and expanse of material resources and money that you need to move away from a neighborhood that will destroy you. You need to protect yourself, protect your family, and protect what you've worked hard for and not expose them to people who don't like you. So the issue of loving your enemies simply means do not hate them. Do not, do not plan to kill them. Don't love them. Don't hate them. Just leave them in between. <laughs> it's better that your enemies do not know what your plans are and they fear you and respect you but keep away from you. That's better that way. It doesn't mean that you cannot do business with your enemies. You can do business with them as long as they bring the money to you and they are buying your product or paying for yourself for the services you offer. There's no problem about that. But keep an eye on them. Bless them that curse you, not me. I will not. I will never ask God to bless those that curse me, those that doesn't like me. Why? Because you are talking about people's behavior. You see, the thing Jesus is saying about loving your enemies and blessing those who curse you has to do with ignorant people. People who, when you point out their mistake, they will easily change. That's what it means. But when somebody has sat down and calculated and cursed you and want to annihilate you, remove you from the face of the earth, or remove food from your mouth, or put you in a situation of danger and in a situation of of entrance towards death or diminishes your influence or try to. You can't love them and you cannot bless them. See, the reason why Jesus appeared on the road to Damascus to Saul 
whose name became Paul of Tarsus, was because in him, he saw that he was capable, that if he, Jesus, point out to him that he is putting his emotion in the wrong places, excuse me, that his passion is in the wrong place, if he knows the truth about him, Jesus, he will switch immediately. And Jesus was right. Whenever you see God approach a human being, to ask that human being for a change, always know that he has seen in that human character, in the depth of that person's behavior, the capacity to accept instruction and to follow direction and to change. And many a time he doesn't approach humans. Why? Because he knows that that person is not capable. That person is arrogant. That person, even if you show him evidence, they are set on their ways. So these are enemies who are not set on their ways. These are people who curse you because they didn't understand. They were ignorant. Others are provoking them to do it. So why are you good to them? So that they can experience the power of God. You pray for such people for a change to come over them because they will be capable of receiving the change and walk away from their foolishness. That's the only way that this applies, that you can do it. But uh, these are people who, when they change, they don't go back to, to their way of darkness. When they walk away from Lucifer, they walk away. When they walk away from people who were provoking them to do evil, they walk away completely. That's the only ones that we can apply this teaching of Jesus to. To love our enemies and to bless them that curse, uh, uh, that curse, uh, that curse us. Um, let's see another one here. Do good uh, to them that hate you and pray for them that despitefully use you and persecute you. All this only applies if these people who do this against us are doing it out of ignorance or are being motivated by other people. They are being used by either the devil or by other people. Or they don't really know. They are doing things against us out of fear. That's the only way you can do this. You can pray for them. You can show them a little bit of love. But outside that, I will start. Outside that, outside that, do not love those. Do not love your enemy. Don't love them. Do not apply this literally. Don't love your enemies. Let your enemies know that you don't love them. And I want you to have money and material resources, supernatural power and physical power, so that when your enemy sees, they will respect and fear you. You must be greater than your enemies. You must be. <laughs> Do not love your enemies. I'm repeating it. If not, your enemies will take that gesture that you are doing it because you are weak. That's number one. Number two. Do not bless them that curse you. Why? Listen to what he said to Abraham. Genesis 12, verse 1 to 3. I balance scripture with scripture. 
He said, Cursed be him who cursed thee. Blessed be him who blessed thee. Is that not what the Bible says? He said to Abraham, anyone who bless you, I will bless. I will bless him who bless you. I will curse the person who cursed you. So how do you balance it with this one? How do you love your enemy when the Bible also says that your job, you and your seeds, your job is to take over the gifts of your enemies. Your job is to take over your enemies and to take over everything they have. The wealth of the wicked will be transferred to the righteous. So you have to balance the Bible. Don't just take these things and say you just run with this. Find out what the Bible says about the same thing somewhere and then you use your intelligence to think so that you don't lose your life trying to practice the Bible. Jesus said, I've come to cast the fire on the ground, on the earth. And this is part of it. So that those who see, they can see and do not see. Those who hear will think they are hearing, they are not hearing anything. Jesus knows what he's doing. When, they, when a foolish and idiot becomes a pastor, he becomes even more foolish. If greedy people become pastors and become preachers of the gospel, they become even more greedy. Or greedy or whatever. <sighs> when good people come to the scripture, they become saints. They become the saints of God. S-A-I-N-T-S. They become God's own people. When wicked people come to the Bible, it will even make them more wicked. Or they did not come to it with an open heart. There's a place for you to, 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 to prove to your enemies they are not needed around here and let them move on. And one of the greatest problems of the Jewish people was they were told to wipe away their enemies. And Saul didn't. And it came to bite them. So while you are trying to practice the Bible, I want you to be aware of how the Bible is rightly practiced. It's a two-way sword. There is a place to do a one-time thing for people and let them go. There's a place to allow people, you don't love them, you don't hate them, Sooner or later, they will, they, will, they will know what is about to happen and they will leave. Let people know that you are serious with your life and they will take you serious. Bless them that curse thee, that curse you. Oh. It's possible that a person became your enemy because they felt that you love everybody, you didn't love them. All right, if that be the case, you show them love and see whether they will change. If they change, okay, that's okay. Or maybe somebody cursed you because they felt left out in their blessing. You were blessing people. You didn't bless them. And what do you do? Okay, you say, I'm, I'm going to do it this one time. So you bless them to see whether they will change. If they don't, then you, you retrieve your blessing and your love. You take it back. Just like me, when I pray for somebody, if they start fighting me, I remove all the blessings. I remove, I recall my prayers. Oh yeah, I have the power to recall my prayers. I recall my blessing and they will all vanish. Say, bless them that curse you. No, 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 no. 
I don't bless people who curse me. God said he will curse those who curse me. Those who curse you, God will curse them. And you have the right to curse those who curse you. People who are cursing you as a form of spell, as a form of witchcraft, and you want me to bless them? Bless them for what? In the first place, how will love be able to walk in the life of somebody who hates? No. How will blessing be able to penetrate into the life of somebody who cares? No, it won't. So you just need to do that. And of course, Paul says that you should do good to somebody like give them food to eat, somebody who is um, an enemy or something like that. And this is what Paul said. He says, when you do good to somebody who doesn't like you, somebody who hates you, the good you've done for that person, since the devils have no shame, that is my own word I'm putting there. He says it's like you are, you are, you are pouring a coal, a burning coal of fire upon that person, which means that by loving your enemy, blessing them that curse you, doing good to them that use, uh, that hates you, you do good to people who hate you, and praying for them which despitefully use you and persecute you, if you do these things to them, you're actually destroying them. I mean, these are people who have no shame and they have been doing bad things to you. And yet, they want you to help them. Any help you give to people who are like this towards you is a judgment you are invoking against them. That's the, what Paul was saying in his writings. So that's why, so that my hand doesn't carry blood, that's why I do not do good things to people like this. Because every good thing I'll do to them is a quick way of sending them to the early grave. Because that's what Paul said. You are, you are pouring a coal of burning, burning fire on them. And they think that they are smart. They do not know that you are actually killing them. And pray, say, you should pray for them that despitefully use you and persecute you. You should pray for them. What do you pray for them? What kind of prayer? Is it prayer for good or prayer for evil? Why do I need to pray for somebody who despitefully is using me and persecuting me at the same time? There are people who despite you. They don't like you. They want you off the earth. They use you. And not only that, they persecute you. We are to pray for them, seriously. I know the kind of prayer that I pray for such people. I do. Rosalind, don't laugh. Don't. I know the kind of prayer. I know the kind of prayer that I will pray for such people. I know. People who despise, who despise me, use me, or who despise you, use you, and persecute you, of course you should know the kind of prayer you should pray for them. It's not going to be a good prayer. <laughs> Except they are ignorant of what they are doing. And if you point out what they are doing that, they are doing it with the wrong person, they will change. You are doing it with the wrong motive and they change. Then that's different. Now let's look at this one. Yeah. Do good to them that hate you. 
you should do good to them that hates you on one condition on one condition when they come to you and confess that they were ignorant of what they are doing and you give them the opportunity to see that the change is real that is the only thing and they come and bow before you that's the only time that you can do good to them because let me tell you there are people whom when you do good to them when you love them when you love your enemies your enemies or you bless them that curse you or you do good to them that hates you or you pray for them that despitefully use and persecute you when you do those things they see it as a weakness and i do not want you to be perceived as being weak don't allow anybody to perceive you as being weak you were called to this earth for two things to enjoy to be blessed and also to rule and to lead and number three to prosper Mary, I hope you are writing it down. You were sent to this earth to be blessed. Number two, to rule. Number three, to prosper. Those are the three reasons. Have you written them down? Okay. Make sure you send me all my notes for today. You were sent to this earth for those three reasons. To be blessed. Number two. What was number two? Whoa. To rule. And number three? To, to prosper. Through providing services, creating product. You prosper. Those are the three reasons you are here. And all of that has a center. The center of activities that all that rallies around on Jesus and that's it <sighs> let us look at number okay we'll stop here we will look at um, verse 45 tomorrow morning Hallelujah. Let us pray. Blessed art thou, Lord God, King of the universe. This morning, fill us with new power, new anointing. We need a new supply of the glory, a new supply of uncommon love, uncommon power. a new supply of peace, a new supply of spiritual giftedness, offices, services, operations, and fruits. We seek your face that you multiply what we do today. Transform what we do from here and let it reach the end of the earth. For you said we should go and preach the gospel. Preaching the gospel does not just mean telling your story just as it is, but using your story and transforming human communities. Please write that down, Annie. Write that down, Mary. Preaching the gospel also means using the story of Jesus to transform the communities of human beings. Lord, we ask today that do mighty things in worship of you and in, and in business, do great things. Connect us today with great people. Connect us with your greatness first and foremost. 
Today we will walk in superior power, in dynamic power. We expect so much financial miracles, miracles of salvation to happen today. Lord, we seize nations, individuals, families, businesses, and we bring them to ourselves and to you. We thank you for all this that you've done today. Protect us, O oh God, and deliver us from the evil one and from all evil, every pool and forces of sin and death. Deliver us with the blood of Jesus. Let them never happen to us today. Lord, we yield our mind, our emotion, our intelligence, everything. Take it and do great things for your kingdom. Wash us with your blood, Jesus, anew. Take us to new levels of holiness. Take us to new levels of abilities. Let our energy be concentrated in meditating of you, in meditation of the Holy Ghost and the Father. Lord, raise up for me new servants, new people who will carry out the work of the gospel throughout the earth. Establish churches all over and businesses and centers of powers. We ask all this in the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord, who lives and reigns with your Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen and Amen. The service has ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please remember to check out our website, itikaimeriministry.com or itikaimeri.com. Also remember to give towards the preaching of the good news of Jesus around the world, towards the practice of miracles, spiritual direction, and carrying out the work of missions and charity and education around the world. Thank you very much. This is Bishop Edekai Mary saying to you, the blessing of the Lord has finally decided to make you rich. Bye-bye.